Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markwe at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. This is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Marquay of Living Streams International, bringing you matters of faith with Graphic Online. Now, this morning, I would like to uh, title my um, sermonette on what I'll call pigsty conversations. You know, in Luke chapter 15, the story of the prodigal son, and um, the story of the prodigal son holds very valuable truth for many people, in fact, reality for our present day. Uh, this is somebody who had offended his father. How did he offend his father? People don't know this. But in those days, you know, um, you wait until your father dies before his inheritance uh, comes to you. So you inherit after he's gone. But whilst your father is alive, what he does is that he leaves from the profit of his labor. So the, the, the interest on his labor is what he leaves by. So the young boy going to his father and demanding his portion, he took one third of his father's living expenses away. That means his father's right to enjoy because the laborer deserves his wages. So he taking it away, uh, deprived his father, cut his father's budget by one third and placed his father in. His father is a good man, but still, I mean, this is an unbudgeted for activity. So it, it placed his father in dire straits by taking one third away. And that was a crime. And that crime is, is a very deadly one. And in actual fact, uh, that crime was punishable by stoning to death. And um, that is the way he even wasted it. He, he needed to be stoned. And that was why when his father saw him coming from afar off, the father ran to him and then embraced him and covered him with kisses in such a way that if anybody wants to stone, he said, the father is there kissing. So the father covered the, the son. But uh, this is all just uh, uh, for your information. But for me, there's something much more powerful than that. What was the pathway of his repentance? What, what would you use to measure the fact that the prodigal son had repented? Mind you, John the Baptist had always insisted. He said, the, the conviction of repentance we don't see. The confession of repentance we don't know. But it is the conduct of repentance that we look out for. By their fruits, you will know them. John Baptist, or Jean Baptist, like I call him, says, go and bear forth fruit worthy of repentance. The fruits, that is what we know. By their fruits, you will know them. So, the, the prodigal son came into repentance. But how do we measure his repentance? Or how do we gauge his repentance? His repentance was marked by a series of actions he took. And those series of actions that he took, uh, number one, the Bible says he came to himself. That means the realization that I have done something wrong. The reality or the realization that, boy, I missed it. I didn't do right. I didn't do right by my father. I didn't do right by my elder brother. I didn't do right by, because living his father is going to create a lot of question marks. People are going to ask, so your father, with all this thing, is a bad man? Is a, all sorts of narratives are going to go out concerning that departure. And for that prodigal son, that was it. But the Bible says he came to himself. And when he came to himself, the next one is the kind of conversations he made with pigs. And that is conversations in the pig style. What did he say? He said, my father is a good man. My father is a good man. So all of a sudden, he started talking about the virtues of the father. Mind you, when he was leaving, he was telling the whole world, I can do something better than my father. I can take my destiny into my hands and manage better and be more successful and be this and that and that than my father. But the Bible said when he came to himself, he started a conversation in the pigsty. About when he began to fill his mouth with chaff and he wasn't getting any food, he began to talk to the pigs. So he was telling, uh, uh, sharing the testimony of his father. My father is a good man. And then he said, in my father's house, there are many servants, and all of them are fed well. All of them are treated well. He began to talk to the pigs. Conversations was in the pigsty. What I'm talking about, 
pigs. Let me go one more step. Who are the pigs? Who are those people that are pigs? Jesus made it simple for us. He said, don't cast your pearls before swine. That is, before the pigs. Don't throw good things in the pathway of pigs. Because here are the characteristics. Number one, they don't appreciate it. Lest they trample upon it. They don't appreciate it. They will never, never appreciate any good thing that is done. Number two, you see your precious things being placed on their feet or they being manhandled, mishandled, and you see your precious things being wasted, your precious effort, your precious time, your precious treasures, your precious investment, you see it being wasted on the anvil of, uh, of expediency for pigs. Never appreciate. And then the Bible also said, lest they turn and devour you. So pigs are people who devour good people. They are just waiting for something negative to say about good people. And normally prodigality look fellowships with pigs. Prodigality fellowships with pigs. And here's the, we'll be saying all sorts of things and doing all sorts of things and bring good people's reputation into tatters. Place good people's reputation in smithereens. Just destroy them to smithereens. Not because of anything, but because of the pursuit of their own folly and the pursuit of what they perceive to be their destiny. And they place people, good people, in harm's way. The reputation of people, good people, are sacrificed on the anvil of convenience and the anvil of lies. So the prodigal son started making conversation in the pigs. You start talking to pigs. Let pigs know that your father is a good man. And in his house, he cares for his servants. And in his house, there is plenty. And so the beginning of the prodigal son's repentance was not just words. Yes, it was a thought. It was a conviction. But were not just words. He began to get up and speak. The activity of the prodigal son started in the pigsty. And those were pigsty conversations. A mark of your repentance is when the person who you destroyed with your tongue, with your mouth, you begin to say good things about the person. That. And it doesn't come from here. It comes from the heart. It comes when, you know, when you're on, on your own. And then it comes when you stand before your, your fellowship of pigs. And then you tell them, this person is a good person. I made a mistake. That's one of the things of repentance. You say, well, what is it? Jesus summarizes it and says it's called restitution. Restitution of a man's, of, of a man's um, uh, character. Restitution of, of a man's, um, uh, a man's uh, what do you call it? His, who he is, his reputation. In fact, that's the word. The restitution of a man's reputation. Make conversation in the pigsty. And that will show to everyone that you're truly repentant of what you did to that person. See you later.